And meanwhile, Ukraine's new government wants Interpol to issue a worldwide red alert for deposed President Viktor Yanukovych. He's accused of murder and abuse of power. Yanukovych ran to Russia last month, leaving behind this secret estate valued at $100 million. His opponents call it a monument to massive corruption. Clarissa Ward has just come back after getting a close-up look for this Sunday's 60 Minutes. Clarissa, good morning. Good morning, Charlie, Nora, and Gail. We wanted to meet the people at the heart of Ukraine's revolution. All of them were motivated by a disgust for the rampant corruption of the former regime, which we saw firsthand when a young activist, Svetislav Yurash, gave us a tour of ousted President Viktor Yanukovych's residence. This is a prime example of just such corruption. Yurash was one of the first to get inside. I mean, this is what your revolution was about, in a sense. This opulence, this complete lack of respect, almost. This complete lack of taste as well, on top of that. <laughs> on top of that. I mean, I'm the size of this fireplace. That's insane. It's actually twice your size. But the point, it's actually twice the point is that this is all stolen money, this is all bribed, this is all corruption, this is nothing that he earned. This, this is a man who was sitting two times in prison, one of them for stealing hats, and now he builds this Versailles for himself. The house has become an instant tourist attraction, with entrepreneurs outside the gates hawking maps of the estate. Documents found on the scene indicate that Yanukovych spent $30 million on the chandeliers alone. A private elevator adorned with Swarovski crystals can't have been cheap either. Some activists want this to be turned into a museum of state corruption. There certainly is a lot to see, including a boat that was used for dinner parties and a private zoo. Remarkably, there was almost no looting when the house was taken over. When we sat down for a chat in the lavish main hall, flower arrangements from the last days of the old regime had just begun to wilt. For an ordinary Ukrainian person, what's their reaction to this? Shocked and outraged. We all knew Yanukovych was corrupt. We all knew he stole money. But the quantity of it is mind-boggling in every way. So you just asked the question I was going to ask, what's the reaction of Ukrainians to all of this? Um, how, tell me how you saw the political change that was taking place there when you were in Kiev and, and how deep and profound their mission is. Well, I mean, what's extraordinary is that this is like unfolding at such a breakneck speed. I mean, within a few months, we've seen people overthrow uh, a dictatorship and now they're staring down the barrel of a Russian gun, so to speak. So I think people feel very vigilant. They are still out there in the square. They are still camped out. They don't believe that their revolution is over yet. Yet. They want to honor the sacrifice of all the people who were killed. But what's amazing when you look at that scene at the house and all these people uh, going to, you know, sort of take like a look at this spectacle, there's no aggression there. There's no aggression. There's a kind of, oh my goodness, thank God like, we did this. This, this guy yes. clearly needed to go. But there's no anger. There's no aggression. It's what about the people in the revolution? Because it seems to come from all walks of life when you look at the videotape and listen to the interviews. And that was what really surprised us. We think of, you know, the people who are out in the street with their sort of lead pipes and their and, and their shields. But this was all different walks of life uniting. And there were billionaires on this barricade. And we'll get into that on <laughs> Sunday night and look at some of the so-called oligarchs, the country super elite wealthy businessmen. Who are supporting the revolution. Many of them were actually supporting this revolution, which may seem counterintuitive, but when you look at the scale of the corruption and this mismanagement of Yanukovych's regime, you understand how that sort of thing is possible. And I think what you point out so, so well in this piece is that the heart of this is really an economic situation. Exactly. You've, yes, and of course, and some say, the failure of the Europeans to act quickly enough with an aid pa package that led Yanukovych closer to the Russians or whatever it may be that argument that's there, but as exists now, really the failure and corruption in, in Ukraine, which raises the question, we're now going to be approving the American taxpayers lots of money towards Ukraine. Ukraine is going to need billions of dollars. It's going to need a lot of support from its Western allies. Mm -hmm. All right, Clarissa, thank you. Look forward to seeing it.